Heart Rhythm 2024, day three Boston in the books, and our wrap up starts now. This is Heart Rhythm TV, and you are with the Heart Rhythm TV team. Some of our members still reporting out there in different sessions and meetings finishing up. Yesterday, we ended in science. Today, we're gonna start with science. Late-breaking trials again. What did we like? Many of us were in that room, jam-packed, a lot more PFA. Where are we at? Mahek, what did you like today at late-breaking? I went to two late breakers today, both of the late breakers. Uh, the Taylor DF trial was quite intriguing. It was uh, focusing on AFib ablation in patients with persistent AF guided by AI versus PBI only. Uh, and for their primary outcome of AFib uh, recurrence, it was a positive trial. And it really lends itself to this question of when someone has persistent AF and the veins are not reconnected, what do we do from there? And it's a newer tool, so more to come. But I I think that was a quite a, quite an interesting trial. And actually using electrograms and dispersion of electrograms to find areas that maybe the human eye can't see. But then when you add AT in there, it kind of was a push with it. So very interesting and provocative. Love that. And it was such a re it's such a refreshing study from the PFA perspective because there was physiology, right? Um, maybe stuff that we can't see, but there was physiology. Physiology that's that, the, that the of AI. machine could see, you know, and uh, I'll take that. Really, really exciting data. Clint, you were uh, talking about olive oil in the corner over there. I was, yeah. We had the Predimar results from the Laybreaker clinical session this afternoon. Really unique study because I don't remember the last time we looked at something like a dietary intervention purely for AFib. Um, it came out of Spain. They um, randomized people to who already had kind of a high prevalence of Mediterranean diet adherence to a more strict Mediterranean diet, mostly with the use of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and looked at the results. It was a overall negative on the primary endpoint, but a post hoc analysis showed quite a big difference only in the paroxysmal AFib group. So maybe a hypothesis generating for a future study for that. Yeah, and I think one of the things about that trial that was really interesting was that they used phone calls, essentially, to help patients adhere more to a Mediterranean diet. And that really makes us think about how scalable that could be. And even in, in a population where they already are consuming mostly Mediterranean diet, they were able to show a significant improvement in their in their diet. So I think that uh, the telephonic and, and telemedicine component of it really makes us think it's scalable, even in a population like ours. They showed an amazing visual that was impressively made that objective. So they, sh they showed a, a rating on a survey for how much of the Mediterranean diet the patients were following, and then over time, and it jumped with the intervention and it stayed elevated. Amazing patient adherence, especially during COVID, um, really should be commended for that. In the same session, they released the Real AF uh, registry as a prospective registry for paroxysmal AFib and ablating in a very specific way, zero or low fluoro, high power, short duration, and um, ablation index guided uh, approaches. And they showed, uh, you know, obviously with a caveat that it wasn't randomized, it's, it's not really apples to apples, but they showed an overall 82% freedom from AFib at one year. Um, and it was kind of refreshing to see a win for RF kind of in this weekend full of PFA and that there may, may still be a role. And um, interesting to think about the future and how that's gonna go as we get more and more PFA and we had Vivek ready in the booth here. Mahak talked to him about some of the late breakers he released. Euphoria. Yep, the Advent and Pulse EU were both uh, both presented today. Uh, Advent is a uh, simultaneous pub in Jack and, and uh, Pulse EU in uh, Heart Rhythm. And uh, especially with the Advent trial, uh, the analysis of burden of AFib was a very interesting thing to talk about because we're shifting away from that binary 30-second outcome of yes or no to AFib recurrence, but more so what is the burden, how does it impact quality of life, and how does it impact healthcare utilization? So I think that was a really interesting result to see that PFA did improve uh, the burden of AFib in these patients. And Although, they found that threshold that... 0.1% 0 0 is significant, but obviously Peric says most, so it's going to be low, but it's interesting to say that it's not a binary categorization, it's not dichotomized. It's about eight minutes of AFib that makes a difference between having good or bad. Instead of 0.1%. Mm -hmm. 
And then Mohit Chogam and Jack E.P. had a simultaneous pub looking at the results of manifest and heart failure. And I think we should go all in with AFib management and heart failure. Everyone knows how I feel about sinus rhythm as therapy. Um, so I think those were great results. Obviously, a little bit more sobering in a heart failure population. Half, 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 ref, about the same, but not as good in those that have no heart failure. Uh, Ambrose, you were in a CCM session. There was more heart failure as well. Yeah, I got a little lost in traffic trying to be the man on the street for HSR, uh, HRS TV today. Um, but I found my way over to Rhythm Theater 1, and, and interesting to go with your SRT. Um, on the space of uh, heart failure, you know, we've got GDMT, always people talking about it, SRT, new buzz, hot topic, I'm with you, all in on this. Um, but device-based therapy is also another option and when appropriate can actually uh, make a significant impact on the patient's uh, outcomes and in in lives. And so had a nice talk uh, by, with Dr. Singh and Dr. Varma kind of leading the way, not only highlighting all the data that's out there, but looking at the history and the progression and really an eye towards the future of the combined CCMD device. So a defibrillator and cardiac contractility modulation, one device, really exciting, has the, has the real potential to, to, to disrupt not only the heart failure space, but the CRM space as well. So I have a question about the sinus ry rhythm therapy discussion though, because uh, you know, we talk about PFA a lot. And you know I, I always have the question of, Doing PFA in a heart failure patient, right? Maybe a more advanced substrate, right? Now we're thinking about hemolysis. We have to do more applications, giving the fluid to, to manage the hemolysis. And more cardiorenal interactions. Exactly. So, you know, I think it's, it's helpful to see that it could be applied in that population. But I think moving forward, you know, again, another potential, you know, thinking about RF in those groups versus PFA, I still have that question. And Jason Andrade and I are meeting about creating a, the next you know pfa afib heart failure trial so stay tuned on that that's exciting and many say that oh i don't want to go to pfa because i have to go back to radiation again um and i don't want to wear lead but there are ways to mitigate that even with new pfa technologies you were at a dedicated session about fluoroscopy reduction yeah it's really cool what you get here early and you get these cool sessions and i joined the group of the radiation reduction we raise the awareness of the conscious of the radiation reduction for safety and health for the patient and for the operators and the whole staff. And always Dr. Masur Rasminia showing new trips and ticks over the, the intracardiac echo. He always has something new to show. I love it. Janet, you were at a really important session changing gears, but our Rhythm Society is taking a larger role in study at sudden cardiac death and awareness. Yeah, absolutely. So I think this is the first meeting really that I've seen and, and I'm sure everyone else has seen that we've actually dived in a little bit more into being having HRS have more of a footprint in sudden cardiac arrest awareness and making sure that we have sort of skin in the game, right? So I was at a really nice session that was led by Mina Chung and um, Sumit Chu, where we had pretty much all the stakeholders in there. We even talked about uh, potentially using drones to deliver AEDs. Uh, we talked about digital health tools uh, to discover sudden cardiac arrest. And we even had the FDA uh, in the room talking about regulation, which I think is so important. And then of course, partnerships, right? Because again, we can't do this alone. AHA has had a huge footprint in this and they were also in the room to hopefully partner with us, which I think is really, really important. I think the other thing we have to understand about HRS is that we do a lot of society work while we're on the ground here as well, right? So I'm gonna put a shameless plug in for HRX. The production group did meet um, and we are getting a lot of work done uh, to try to get our meeting in September in Atlanta off the ground and we're, we're off to a great start. Fantastic. And then obviously, you know, kudos to Renaud Knops because in the, the leadless space, there were a couple of advancements today. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and also a headline in New England Journal paper. And I, I scrolled the New England Journal and we have to love it as electrophysiologists when we're front billing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we had a very nice discussion here in the studio. Um, you know, modular ATP, simultaneous publication in the New England Journal, 160 patients with the SICD, now you added leadless um, active fix pacemaker, and and the the SICD can actually now communicate with the uh, leadless pacemaker to deliver ATP. Very high efficacy for the ATP, um, roughly, um, you know, a high success rate. Seventy percent. Yeah, seventy percent success rate. And then one of the questions was there were some inappropriate therapies. Um, 
double counting of slow VT was a component, which is that, you know, is it inappropriate? The patients in the VT, they got treated, they double counted. Um, moving forward, though, I think really a potential disruption, right, for that leadless space with modular ATP. Um, additionally, uh, Raynaud also presented the dual chamber leadless one-year follow-up. So we had the original IDE trial, 300 patients, three-month data showing pretty good acute results, some kind of learning curve related to it. But really, those the, the, the subsequent nine months, really, really good safety data, like just you know, your thresholds improved or stayed stable, um, no dislodgement, a couple reprogramming things, but overall looking really good. Uh, AV communication was good. AV synchrony above 70% in 97% of patients. And then also, with the IDE trial, there was a, an indication for AI pacing. And so you could take those dual chambers and make them AI with UVI backup and almost double their battery life. So uh, really kind of relinquishing concerns for battery life with the dual chamber leadless system. So we've covered olive oil, we've done the heart failure, we've done PFA and radiation reduction and all of the great late breakers, simultaneous pubs in New England Journal of Medicine, Jack E.P., Heart Rhythm Journal. But what I was really impressed by, and I'm really happy, is that we got some puppies involved today in the Heart Rhythm TV. This Heart Rhythm TV team went down to one of the most exciting exhibit booths and went to where K9 Rescue was there, and there were just some adorable, adorable puppies. But the intention of this is this is meant to change the mood. This is not only about science. We're here, and it's a feel-good moment, and there's so many people that probably miss their dogs, and these are dogs that are up for adoption. So yes, we covered puppies. And more importantly, we have merch. We have merch, and if you see this here. Swag. We've got some swag here. And then there are some new future generations of EP. And it was really cool for me being a father, seeing the child care center, because we're talking about inclusion. Bring in FHRS 2050. 20, I don't even 2050. In this here, but there are some. <laughs> Bring them in, Leo. Future people that will be adopting PFA technology as well. Um, but this is this is a Don day right here. <laughs> this is a Don day Kutsko, yes, and I would love to uh, say thank you to HRS for having childcare on site uh, to all the women in EPs, uh, moms and mother figures, and women in EP in general. Uh, it's been really great to have childcare uh, on site so that we can enjoy the science, connect with our colleagues, and then pop in to, to get some baby snuggles. So much more than just great, great science. <laughs> Day three is in the books here in Boston, and this Heart Rhythm TV team is gonna go to happy hour right now. That's a wrap.